Man, I just love a G-Shock. I rarely wear one, there's just too much competition in my watch box, but I do love and own two of them. And after years of collecting watches and years of owning and trying G-Shocks, I can safely say that this GWM 5610-1 is my favorite G-Shock, and I'd go as far to say that not only is it my favorite, but it's the best G-Shock you can buy. And I will prove this with just five bullet points. Number one, the size. G-Shocks come in a huge variety of sizes from the square baby G that's 38 millimeters wide and 11.3 millimeters thick to the Master of G Mudmaster GWG 1000 that's 56 millimeters wide and 18 millimeters thick. So big and knobby that I think you could use it as a spare tire when off-roading. No G-Shocks are exactly small, not even the baby G's, but from all the G-Shocks I've owned and tried on, the GWM 5610 is the ideal size for me. It's 43.2 millimeters wide, kinda sorta 46.7 millimeters long and 12.7 millimeters thick. It also weighs only 52 grams and it has 200 meters of water resistance unlike the Baby G's 100 meters. I say kinda sorta 46.7 millimeters long because that's the length of the case but the way the strap flares out, the full extent including the strap is larger but on my 7-inch wrist, it's ideal, and I'm certain that people with much smaller wrists or much larger wrists can wear this. And despite that size, the 5610 uses the 3159 module that's packed with features. Alarms, timers, a world timer. The 3159 module does a lot. Casio calls it a module, but I don't know, you can think of it as the movement of the watch. That's mostly what module means here. And two features of this 3159 module go on my list for why I think this is the best G-Shock. Number two, Tough Solar. Tough Solar is Casio's name for solar charging. There's a ring of photosensitive elements around the display, solar panels basically. But the watch can be charged by nearly any light, it doesn't have to be the sun. I keep this in my closet and the light bulb in there seems to be enough to keep this charged during the weeks I don't wear it. The simplicity of Tough Solar means that I don't have to think about this watch, it's ready whenever I need it. No battery replacements, no winding of course, just standing by to be picked up and put on. And I don't even have to set the time. Which brings me to bullet point number three, multiband six radio control. I don't have to set this watch. Depending on how accurate you like your timepiece, you might not need to set a standard quartz watch either, for a while at least. A standard quartz movement will lose or gain about 15 seconds per month. But this G-Shock keeps time accurately to the second because it's synchronizing every night with an atomic clock. In the US, the UK, Germany, Japan, and China, there are atomic clocks which send out radio signals of the exact time. And every night, automatically, this watch receives one of those signals and sets the time accordingly. You can do a manual sync at any time, and you can always manually set the watch to whatever time you want, but I never have. Some of you are saying, yeah, but you always have the correct time on your phone. A reasonable response to which I say, shut up, you don't know me. So between the Tough Solar and the radio control, this G-Shock runs constantly, will never need a battery replacement, and is always accurate to the second. There are other G-Shocks that have both radio control and Tough Solar, but most are larger or metal or ugly. And speaking of looks, number four, you can modify this watch. The kids are calling it modding. You can find lots of external parts for this watch by looking for straps, and bracelets, bezels that fit watches that use this module, the 3159 module. My first modification to this watch was getting a more supple rubber strap. I'd read that the straps for the GWM5000 were softer than the stock strap on this 5610. So I found one on eBay and yeah, it was softer. Noticeable, but meh, nothing great. My next modification was a bracelet. This is called a combi bracelet and it comes on the GWM5610 UBC, which is a blacked out version of my 5610. The bracelet is super cool and comfortable. It took me a while to find one and it cost nearly as much as the watch, I think about $85 at the time. Just Google G-Shock Combi Bracelet. And the final modification I've tried is my favorite so far, a white strap and white bezel. I wanted a little flare on my wrist and I also wanted to see what it would be like to wear a fully white watch. Turns out I love it. 
Again, I found these on eBay by searching for Casio 5610 parts. I'm a guy who wears watches for form and function. I want my timepiece to have a little heat. Black is fine, but a bit boring. A white G-Shock? Yeah, that's more like it. There are other cool color options and even other material options that I've considered like this rainbow metal bezel and bracelet, but the white resin is great for now. Number five, the price. I bought this watch maybe five or six years ago, brand new for $90 with a full Casio warranty. As of today, the prices are about $115. I think that's still an amazing price for this watch. It's the kind of price that makes you question all other watches. A pure functionalist might say that this is not only the best G-Shock available, but perhaps the best watch in the world, that anything else is a waste of money. Of course, I disagree. I mean, with all the money I spent on mechanical watches, I either have to disagree or reassess my whole life, and that does not sound like a fun way to spend a weekend. But I do agree that for a little more than $100, it's bananas what you're getting. A nearly indestructible, effortlessly accurate, impossibly low maintenance watch that can fit most wrists. And because of that, I'll add a six bonus bullet point. Number six, respect. This is a hundred dollar watch that's actually respected by watch nerds. I know, why should anyone care what a bunch of sociopaths think? But if you do care, this watch has you covered. I know lots of collectors with watch budgets greater than the defense budgets of many small countries, and even they love and respect a good G-Shock, especially a square G like this. Again, that's only if other people's opinions matter to you. They don't matter to me, so please be nice in the comments. And in conclusion, I think everyone who has even a fleeting interest in watches should own a Casio G-Shock at some point. There's enough variety of styles and sizes and features that you'll probably find one you like. And with the relatively low prices, there's not much to disagree with. And when people ask me, from the overwhelming options of G-Shocks, which is the best one, I don't hesitate to say that this GWM 5610 is the best, dot dot dot, for me.